you have your Bibles today, I want us to go to Psalms chapter 1. I ask people all the time, do you want to be blessed? And everybody raises their hand, I want to be blessed. Well, I think we have part of the answer here in Psalms chapter 1. Some of you may have it memorized. I've had it memorized for a long time, and it's a good passage of Scripture. Beginning at verse number 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Verse 3. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth its fruit in his season, his leaf shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Martin Luther called the book of Psalms a little Bible. The reason he called the book of Psalms a little Bible is because the book of Psalms talks about God as being our king. And then we know all through the book of Psalms, he talks over and over again how the Lord created the universe. There's like a thread that goes through that he is the creator of the universe. And also, He is our Redeemer. And none of us would be here without God this morning. Amen. Amen. None of you could have brought yourself here. But we also need Him as a Redeemer. Because we are all sinners saved by grace. Amen. You know, <clears throat> I knew a couple. They are both the same age. Worked at the same factory. Made the same amount of money. But the one couple put God's counsel in their family. Put God first in their family. And when they both hit 65, the man that put God's counsel in his life, put God first in his life, uh, owned a home, had a nice family, uh, had a lot of memories with his family. And the other man who made the same amount of money but did not have God in his picture, did not own his own home, had nothing, his family was in shambles, did not have good memories. And what a tragedy that two people who had the same opportunity one at 65 has a wonderful family, has a home, has a lot of memories. The other has no home, doesn't own anything. Children have no respect for him. What makes the difference? Well, verse number one is very interesting verse. Because he says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, but nor sitteth in the seat of scornful. There's three things I see here, and I've never really seen it, even though I've memorized the passage, and it is this. Who are you walking with for your counsel? Who are you standing with? Who are you sitting with today? You see, a man who walks, as he says here, with the un, in the counsel of the ungodly, will begin to take that counsel and apply it to his life and begin to live it. That's why he says, blessed is the man who does not walk with these type of people. I was with my nurses yesterday, and I love my nurses, but they're educated, have children. But as I talked to them about some old-fashioned principles in the Bible, 
The one said, well, old-fashioned things don't work anymore. And I said, you know, I beg to differ with you because I said, you know, I'm praying for you and your family. Um, they don't take them to church. They buy them clothes. They buy them nice things. <coughs> they don't give them counsel. They're not giving them any moral counsel. It's really sad, isn't it? That we live in a time where we are blessed, as verse number one says, blessed. And yet we as people don't understand what being blessed is or where our blessings come from. The next verse is, standeth in the way of sinners in verse number one. Are you standing with sinners? Are you endorsing how they're living? Are you, you know, people say, I'm standing with you, pastor. They're saying, I'm standing with what you preach on. But he says, if you stand with sinners... Look out. And then sitting with the scornful. Why shouldn't we sit with the scornful? They're like agnostics who deny God and deny even his existence. Scorners will say, you know, you'll say, I don't know if God's answering prayer. And you're sitting with a scorner. And the scorner will say, well, God doesn't answer prayer. You see how influential it is? To be with people of that sort. That's why he says in verse number 2. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. Our cows when I was on the farm. We knew that if 7 out of 10 cows were chewing their cud after they got fed. When they were laying down in the stalls and they were chewing their cud. We knew that our production would be at a maximum level because we knew they were getting the maximum use out of that feed that they had ate. They brought it back up and chewed on it again. And meditating means to bring it back up and to chew on it. I know it's dinner time, but you know, <laughs> thank God we're not like cows. But, but if five out of the 10 cows are chewing their cuds where our production went down, Breeding went down. Everything went down. We knew that we could get optimal benefits out of our cows if we had 7 out of 10 laying there in the stalls chewing their cud. And we as Christians need to chew our cud and meditate in the Word of God day and night. He says in verse number 3, And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Now, I want to be a blessed man, so I'm going to walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, not sit in the seat of the scorn for, score, uh, score got it there, or stand with sinners. But I'm going to meditate in the Word of God day and night. Because I want to be blessed, I want to have my tree well. I want to be blessed by the Lord. And blessings full from the Lord. Verse number four, the ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. And as a kid, as I remember we did combining, there's a bunch of chaff. And I said, Dad, we got a bunch of oats over here. And he said, that's just chaff. And the wind came and it blew it away. There was no substance to it. I don't want to be chaff which is blown away. I want to have substance to my life. I want to be a life that has blessings that are bestowed upon me by God. Amen. Verse 5, Therefore the ungodly are not so, or shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Sinners are not on the winning team this morning. Sinners will not survive. They may look like it, but the Bible says in Psalm 37, fret not because of evildoers. Don't get excited where it looks like he's blessing them because they are going to be knocked down like the chaff. They're, going to, they're not going to win. It's not the winning team to be on. In verse number 6, For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. doesn't say it might says it shall perish. 
Now, I don't think anybody goes out there today and says, I'm going to live the way of the ungodly. I'm going to live the way, I'm going to take the path of unrighteousness. But what happens is, when we sit, stand, and walk with these type of people, as in verse number one, we end up becoming, in that lifestyle, automatically picking up the counsel, picking up the tone and the ways. Now my oldest daughter, when she went to Texas, said, Dad, I guarantee you I won't talk like a Texan. I'm not going to pick it up. Well, she was up last Christmas and talk about talking like a Texan. Y'all need to do this. And, and, you know, the ketchup ain't ketchup, it's ketchup. And, you know, oh, you know, everything's different. She picked up the lingo. It's hard not to pick up the lingo. That's why we're not to hang around with sinners and encourage them because we're going to pick what they are telling us to do. Now, this first chapter in verse 2 talks about meditating. And of course, this is a manual book. The Bible is a manual book for instruction for us as believers so that we can experience what I call a blessed life and a life of abundance and a life of holiness and happiness. Now, I've been watching a lot of TV because I go to Dallas. <laughs> They put it in front of you. So Saturday they had this RV world on. Families that have RVs. And you know, of course, my wife was an RV girl. Her dad had five girls and a wife. And they all liked a lot of shoes. And Vernon said you can only bring three pairs of shoes. And uh, they got a flat tire one day with the RV, and he went to get the flat tire out, and a bunch of shoes fell out. <laughs> they got caught. All those shoes he had to take out before he get that flat tire, ever get the tire out. But in this, in this RV world yesterday, they were showing how young families are doing things that they think they should do because time is of an essence to enjoy your family. And they brought up a man who was 62 years of age. He worked all of his life, did not do anything with his family, so that when he got older, him and his wife could travel the world in their RV. And after he retired, he felt some pain he went to the doctor and they said, you got prostate cancer. And he never got to travel. He passed away. So he never got to make memories. When I was out visiting in Watertown in college, I went to this door and this lady came out. She was crying. And I said, ma'am, what's, what's the problem? And she said, my husband passed away. She said, you see that RV there? She said, my husband and I never took any vacation together because we wanted to start at a young age. She said, my husband bought that RV over there, brought it in the driveway. We were packing it. He got chest pains. She said, he went to the doctor and they said, yeah, you had a heart attack. And eight days later, he had passed away. He never got to enjoy his retirement or his motor home. But you know, when you go to the world, you get counsel. Make all you can make. Get all the toys you can get. Don't go to church. Don't waste your time taking your family to church. Only 3% of our young people are in church today. Only 3%. Shame on America because I think we are blessed. And the blessings that we bestowed upon us should make us want to come to church and worship God. Amen. Amen. I want to go to Psalm 106. Look what he tells us in verse number 1. <coughs> 
Praise ye the Lord, O give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Who can utter the mighty acts of the Lord? Who can show forth all his praise? Blessed are they that keep judgment, and he that doeth righteousness at all times. Remember me, O Lord, with the favor that thou bearest unto thy people. O visit me with thy salvation, that I may see the good of thy chosen, that I may rejoice in the gladness of this nation, that I may glory with mine inheritance. We have sinned with our fathers, we have committed iniquity, we have done wickedly. Our fathers understood not thy wonders in Egypt, they remember not the multitude of thy mercies, but provoked him at the sea, even at the Red Sea. Nevertheless, he saved them for his name's sake, that he might make his mighty power to be known. Verse number three, blessed are they that what? Keep judgment. And he that doeth righteousness once in a while? No, at all times, at all times, Go back to Psalm 105, verse 1. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people. Sing unto him, sing psalms unto him, talk ye of all his wondrous works. Glory ye in his holy name, let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and his strength and seek his favor evermore. Again, two men in this life, same age, same job, had the same, had different wives, but had kids, but ended up totally different. Reason being is, blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. We have to take that seriously if we want to be blessed this morning. Go back to Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands, and serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that it is the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter in his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endure to all generations. We need to bless the Lord by serving him and living for him if we're ever going to get blessings back in our life. And though these nurses said some of the old-fashioned things are outdated, I told them about marriage. I told them about living together. How that even if they do get married, the success of their marriage is less than two who wait for that day to get married. Make that vow before God. Amen. They laughed at me and they both said, well, we lived together for a while. And I said, well, you better get to the church. And the one lady said, well, my aunt took me to church twice. I said, well, that's a start, but you need to know who God is and get good counsel. Amen. Because you have the odds against you. Whether you want to believe in marriage or not, it's old-fashioned, but it's still good counsel. Amen. Amen. Look at chapter 103. Verse 1, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. You know, you heard me say this 199 times. I don't understand why people in this world, in America, enjoy so many benefits, so many blessings, and they don't go to church. They don't put God first in their life. When we as Americans should pack out our churches with all the benefits that we have. We are blessed. 
We are blessed. I want to go to Matthew chapter 6, beginning at verse 30. Matthew 6, 30. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast in the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But he says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And of course, as he says in verse 30, Wherefore God so clothed the grass of the field, which is today or tomorrow, and cast in the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith. And you know, I think that as I continue on this journey in life, we all need God. Amen. We need to put Him first. And then verse 31 tells us, Take no thought, saying, What shall we eat or drink? We ought to die to ourselves and let God take complete control, right? Because in verse 33, He says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. That is counsel from the Lord, Amen. not from secular counselors. They will tell you to go out and get a good job, make as much money as you can. Don't waste your time going to church. You know, don't waste too much time with your family. All these things. And you know, I like the Bible because it is a book that gives me good counsel. He tells me not to take any thought for my life because it's just a vapor. It's here today and gone tomorrow. Some people have come to the end of their life and realize they got the wrong counsel. Now they want to make memories and it's too late. Some want to go to church with their family and now it's too late. We need to follow the Lord each and every day of our life. I want to go back to Psalms 33 and look at verse number 11 and 12. The counsel of the Lord standeth for forever, right? It stands forever, the thoughts of his heart to all generations, not a hundred year ago generations. It says it stands to all generations. Verse 12, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. Why the Lord looketh from heaven, he beholdeth all the sons of men. You know, that's why he says in verse number 1 of Psalm 33, Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous, for praise is comely for the upright. I think we can continually praise the Lord as we live right for Him because we know the righteousness is a benefit to me this morning. It is a benefit. There was a lady on the radio last night and... She said she was drinking every night because the world said that drinking is good for your health. Well, she found out that drinking every night is not a health insurance. That she was lied to. And now she's not drinking anymore. Interesting, isn't it, that we get counsel from the world because somebody's making money on it. Someone has said once, follow the money. <laughs> follow the money and you'll realize why they're pushing whatever they're pushing so hard. <coughs> Wouldn't it be nice to get counsel that is the truth? God's counsel is truthful. It is honest. It is not deceptive. It does not lie to you this morning. You can bank on it. Go back to Psalm 32. And let's look at verses 1 and 2. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is a man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile. We are blessed today because our sin is covered 
has been forgiven by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That's one reason why I want to serve him with all my heart, with all my strength, and with all my might. Because I don't deserve heaven. But as I read the book of Psalm, I, re I realize that God is my creator. God is my redeemer. He sent Jesus Christ to redeem me from my sins. And so I don't want to stand with sinners. I don't want to walk with sinners. And I don't want to sit with the scornful this morning. I want to sit with the righteous, stand with the righteous, and walk with the righteous. Because there are so many benefits. Look at number 8 of the same passage. He says, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye, and I be ye not as the horse or as the mule which have no understanding, whose mouth must be held in with bit and bridle, lest they come near unto thee. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he that trusteth in the Lord, mercy shall compass him about. Be glad in the Lord, and rejoice in ye righteous, and shout for joy, all ye that are upright in heart. Wow. We need to rejoice in the Lord. We need to be upright in our hearts this morning. We need to understand that righteousness exalteth any person. We can get by with sin and Psalm 37 says, don't get too excited about the sinner because his day is coming where judgment will come. God is a righteous God. <coughs> I got another message. I don't know when I'm going to preach. I don't have time today. But uh, I got four points there, but I think it's good to give it to you this morning because I'm talking about when God blesses us, how to be blessed. We have to follow him, don't we? Yeah. And blessed is the man that does not stand or walk or sit with these people. But once you're blessed, your blessing should flow to others. Amen. 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 When the Lord blesses you, you should begin to bless others with what God has bestowed upon you. The second point is when you bless others, God will take care of your needs. Amen. Amen. Don't be ever afraid to bless somebody else because God sees it and he'll bless you right back. Amen. 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 Number th three, your blessings will come back to you. Your blessings will come back to you. I like Haggai as your seed in the barn. Amen. If you don't plant seed, you're not going to get more corn. Right. You got to plant some of that seed to get more corn. And I think that when you're blessed, and when you bless others, your blessings will come back to you. And number four, the more God blesses you, the more God expects you to bless others. Amen. 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 I pray, Lord, bless me so I can keep giving back to other people. Amen. You know, when the preacher said it's more blessed to give than it is to receive, I said that first Sunday, he's a liar. <laughs> I said, it's more blessed to get. But I have found it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. And I'll never know all the blessings that are bestowed upon me when I give. Because they get better and better. Amen. And God has blessed me mightily. And if the Lord would call me home today, don't have any regrets for me. Because I've enjoyed my life. It's been a good life. I've had many, many, many blessings bestowed upon me. And I have no regrets for serving the Lord. Because he is a good God. Amen. He's good all the time. And we need his blessings. Showers of blessings we need. Mercy drops around us are falling. Praise the Lord. Blessings he bestows upon us. And we have them day in and day out. And remember, you're here because of God. You didn't choose this. God chose you. Brought you in this world. So serve him. Praise him. And realize 
You will not be blessed by walking with sinners or standing with them or sitting with the scorners. You need to meditate in the Word of God day and night. With our heads bowed and eyes closed. You're here today and say, Pastor, pray for me. I do want God's blessings in my life. Pray that I will make the right decisions, follow the Bible as counsel, so my life will be a, a life of life. And you'd raise your hands. Yes, I see hands all over. Amen. 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 You may put them down. Anyone else? I want a life of blessing. Yes, I see that hand. I see that one. Father, thank you for the many hands that have gone up today, and I know they've gone up in sincerity of heart. And Lord, I know I want to be blessed continually so I can bless others. And I don't worry about you blessing me because I just know your promises, but you will, you will bless me because I bless others. And these have raised their hands, Lord, help them to be a blessing. Bless them, Lord, so that they can bless others. There may be so many different areas. And so make them a, a avenue or a channel of blessing. That people will see God's goodness in their life. Be with those who could not be with us today. Be with us next Sunday. We pray that you bring families that don't go to church on a regular basis. That you will bring them out next Sunday. And this might ignite them to get their family in church and make good memories. And that they would have God at the centerfold of their life so that they make right choices. Their priorities will be different. The way they spend their time will be different. It's everything in their life will be different. And so thank you again for this opportunity to meet in the house of God. Now dismiss us with your love and blessings. And thank you again, Lord, for the rain. We don't take it lightly. And we realize that we did need you to send the rain. And you bestowed that upon us. And so we want to say thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.